solve the system. All right, to help us do this problem, I've gone ahead and listed a set of steps that can be followed. These steps apply to systems, obviously, that have three equations with three unknowns. However, they can be generalized to a larger set of equations with a larger set of unknowns. They can also be used for a smaller set of equations with a smaller set of unknowns. And obviously, if some things are, are true of your system that aren't true of this particular one, you can obviously eliminate some steps. For example, if one of the equations already was missing an x variable, then you could jump right to step two, for example. The bottom line is, is that this is just kind of a rough algorithm of how to solve a problem like the one that we're going to cover in this video. It will work perfectly for the one in this video. Obviously, for other systems, you would want to modify them slightly. We're going to start by doing the first step, which is to use equation 1 and equation 2 to eliminate x. So what you want to do is probably copy down the first equation. 5x plus 3y minus 2z is equal to 1. And then for the second equation, we're going to multiply it by negative 5. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want to have the coefficient of x match the coefficient of x above, but have opposite signs. So for example, I want the second equation here to be minus 5x. And then negative 5 times negative y is going to give you a positive 5y, right? And then negative 5 times z is going to give you a negative 5z. And negative 5 times 6 is going to give you negative 30. All right, from there, you're going to add and end up with a new equation. So these guys will cancel each other out. 3 and 5y will make 8y. Negative 2z and negative 5z will make negative 7z. And 1 minus 30 is negative 29. Okay, so we want to hang on to this equation here, and let's go to step two. Step two says to use equation one and equation three to eliminate x. So I'll copy down 5x plus 3y minus 2z is equal to 1. Let's copy down equation three with that as well. So we have 2x plus 2y minus z is equal to negative 1. And now let's think about what we'd have to multiply these two lines by. In order to make sure that the x variable will cancel out when we add the two equations together. Well, what if I multiply the top equation by negative 2 and I multiplied the bottom equation by positive 5? What would happen then? Well, let's see. I would end up with negative 10x minus 6y plus 4z equals to negative 2 for the top equation. For the bottom, I would have 10x, positive 10x, positive 10y, negative 5z, and negative 5. And if I added these together, the 10s would cancel out, and I would end up with positive 4y minus z is equal to negative 7. All right, so we've accomplished step two. Let's look at step three. It says use the resulting equations to eliminate y. So we're going to pair these equations up together now. So let's think about 8y minus 7z is equal to negative 29, and positive 4y minus z is equal to negative 7. What can I do to get rid of y here? Well, what if I multiply the bottom equation by simply negative 2? So the top equation would remain the same. It would be 8y minus 7z is equal to negative 29. But the bottom equation would now become negative 8y positive 2z is equal to positive 14. And if I add these together, the 8s will cancel out and the y's will cancel out as a result. And then we'll have negative 5z is equal to negative 15. Now, using this equation, we'll do our next to last step, which is to solve that resulting equation for z. Well, that's easy enough. If I solve that for z, I will simply get what? Divide both sides by negative 5. And I will see that z 
is equal to positive 3 because negative 5 goes into negative 15 a positive 3 times. And if I know that z is equal to 3, I can then use that to back substitute and finish the problem. All right, so our last step is to take this z and then ultimately back substitute to find all our missing variables. So z can go into an equation that only has y and z, like for example this one, right? So we'll have 4y minus z, which we said was 3, is equal to negative 7. So then it'll be 4y is equal to, if we bring the 3 to the other side, it'll be negative 7 plus 3. Or in other words, 4y is equal to negative 4. From here, this must mean that y is equal to negative 1. All right, so now that we have y and z, we can use those to plug into any equation we want from above. I'm going to take this equation because it's nice and simple, the second line from the system. Let's plug y in here and z in here and see what we get. Well, you would have x minus a negative 1 plus 3 is equal to 6. This is the same as saying x plus 1 plus 3 is equal to 6, or in other words, x plus 4 is equal to 6. And by inspection, you can see that that must mean that x is 2. So we now have our solution for the system. x is 2, y is negative 1, and z is 3.